After Ptolemy II, the Red Sea coast prospered due to new trade opportunities brought by his canal. However, the canal would not last forever, so whatever happened to this ancient Suez Canal? After the Roman conquest of Egypt in the late 1st century BCE, the Romans made use of the already existing impressive infrastructure and administration. In the Suez Canal's case, it was not only used, but also expanded. For example, Emperor Trajan had its offtake changed to secure a better flow of water. This canal would be referred to as the River of Trajan by contemporaries. However, after 170 CE, no further records of the canal or travels on it have been recovered. The next reference to the canal would be made during the tumultuous period of the rise of Islam and its subsequent expansion into Egypt, North Africa and most of the Middle East. After the conquest of Egypt in 641, the conqueror and then governor of Egypt, Amir ibn al-As, had the canal reopened, as contemporary Arab authors claimed it had silted up due to neglect. The canal would be renamed and would henceforth be known as the Khalij Amir al-Muminin, or in English, the Canal of the Commander of the Faithful, and would be a vital component of Islamic trade, allowing for different parts of the Caliphate to trade directly. Unfortunately, the canal's renaissance would be short-lived. In 767, for reasons unknown, the Abbasid Caliph al-Mansur ordered the canal closed. Such a decision would not stop the flow of trade between the Mediterranean and India. For centuries to come, Egypt would become the middleman in such transactions. By the late Middle Ages, the mercantile powers of Genoa and Venice had made their fortunes by trading with the Mamluks of Egypt and reselling their Indian goods, such as spices, to the rest of Europe. Venetian dominance would only be contested by the Portuguese, as the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama reached India in 1498, opening a new trade route between India and Europe, this one circumnavigating Africa. Even so, rather than accepting Portuguese rivalry, the Venetian Republic envisioned a grand and ambitious project of opening a new canal in the Suez. Unfortunately for the Serene Republic, their dreams would be crushed by the Ottoman conquest of Egypt in 1517. The Ottomans, hostile to the Venetians, rendered the plan impossible to carry out. Venetian leaders, driven to desperation, contemplated digging a waterway between the Red Sea and the Nile, anticipating the Suez Canal by almost 400 years to bring the luxury trade flooding to their doors again. But this remained a dream. At the height of their power, the Ottomans also sought to build a canal, their goal being that it would allow the connection of the Red Sea fleet to the larger Mediterranean one, as the Red Sea was suffering from a large European presence. It also had the benefit of allowing an easier journey between the greater Ottoman Empire, the Muslim world and the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. Unfortunately, such a project revealed itself prohibitively expensive, even for the mighty Ottoman Empire, and the plan would be abandoned. The Ottoman project would be the last attempt at the creation of such a canal for over 200 years, its memory only being revived during Napoleon's campaign in Egypt, as he found what remained of the ancient canal. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to our Imperator level patron, Fernando Lopez Olleda. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more great historical content. Also, feel free to check out our Discord and Patreon, linked in the description below.